I would like to welcome you to today's webinar, Tips on How to Leverage Technology Effectively for Sales Managers. My name is Arlene Itori, and I'm a webinar coordinator for the Outsourcing Institute. And it is our pleasure to be the co-host of today's event with the Technology Therapy Group. I'll be working in the background to help answer any technical or general questions that you may have. We encourage you at any time during the presentation to submit your questions to today's speaker. To do this, click on the questions box, type your question in the space provided, and click on the submit button. Today's webinar is being recorded. You will be receiving a follow-up email in approximately two days, which will include a link with today's recorded webinar. The webinar recording and the presentation slides will also be available at Outsourcing.com. So without further ado, I will now turn it over to our moderator, Dan Goodstein, Managing Director at the Outsourcing Institute, for the formal introduction of today's speaker. Thank you. Thanks, Arlene. Dan Goodstein here. Uh, I run the Media and Promotions Group here at the Outsourcing Institute, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, we, have a, we have a great topic and a great speaker. I've, uh, I've heard Jennifer Shaheen speak before personally, and uh, uh, she was my first choice for, for this topic. Um, so uh, very much looking forward to uh, her presentation today. Uh, before I do that, for those of you um, who are maybe new to the Outsourcing Institute, uh, I want to give you a little bit of background on the organization. Uh, for those of you who are not members, uh, we are the largest professional association of outsourcing executives in the world, 70,000 members globally, uh, and are most known as the go-to source for outsourcing trends, best practices, uh, and case studies through uh, events and, uh, and outsourcing.com portal. Uh, we also um, are helping out uh, outsourcing people uh, get outsourcing jobs and recruit good outsourcing talent through our sister company, CMS, um, and have recently uh, been helping out with training through our OI University program. Uh, a few current events uh, I'd like to make everyone aware of. Um, our Outsourcing Roadshow series is gearing up for the fall here uh, with a roadshow in New York and Houston on December 8th. Um, and a road show in Columbus, Ohio on November 9th. Uh, we'll also we'll be announcing um, our winter and spring series soon, where we're looking to add Toronto, um, Mexico City, uh, and London. Uh, and as always, uh, for those of, uh, those of you who buy outsourcing and manage outsourcing, um, there's a variety of services with our group that uh, help with RFP software and matchmaker services and other related transaction tools. Um, and I believe the majority of you here are, are sales and marketing people. Um, and uh, and OI may be best known for its uh, business development and sponsorship opportunities. So um, all that uh, all that said, I want to jump into uh, jump into the presentation here. Uh, this is the the second webinar in our sell more outsourcing series. Um, and um, you know, at first glance, you might say, "What does technology have to do uh, with sales and marketing?" But I think there's an interesting angle here, uh, and how technology relates to sales. Uh, as, as those of you who sell or lead sales teams know, sales is very much an art. Uh, but I've always been very intrigued by the idea of um, uh, of making as much of a science as possible, and a lot of that comes from the process and the technology uh, that supports that process. Uh, and so I think you'll find Jennifer is the right person, uh, the right mix between that sales uh, and technology. So as a, as a quick background, uh, Jennifer is the president and founder of uh, Technology Therapist. Uh, she is uh, an expert in helping companies leverage technology for, for sales and marketing. Um, and a technology therapy, uh, she advises organizations on web development, web design, uh, and web marketing as it relates to sales and applying technology to sales applications. So uh, a wealth of knowledge and, and the kind of tech person we like who uh, can actually apply technology to sales and marketing. Uh, so um, uh, happy to introduce uh, Jennifer Shaheen. Thank you so much, Dan. I'm looking forward to today's um, webinar, and I hope you all enjoy it. Um, Normally, I don't talk about us at the beginning, but I, I thought it was kind of important, and, and everyone can read the slide when you have a moment, but what we do at the Technology Therapy Group is we are a full-service web design development and marketing firm, as Dan had mentioned, but what I think is really important to understand is that 
when you're building a website, just like building a sales process, if you can't really explain to other people what your process is, you're not going to get an outcome that works for you. And the web is a big part of that. Um, I spend a lot of time with small to mid-sized businesses where I'm constantly asking them, okay, you know, what are your goals? What is the process? What is what you're looking for to get out of your website? And when they have a hard time explaining that to me, oftentimes it's a lot harder for them to see success from their website. And I thought that was kind of an important piece for us to start with because it does really start with um, what we'll be talking about today. So kind of jumping right over to our topics for discussion, which is the importance of outlining your sales cycle and identifying the different opportunities for automation. And you just heard Dan say that, that you know you think of sales as an art, but there is a way <laughs> to make art somewhat process oriented. And most of us are not artists here, at least I don't think of myself that way, though I do think we get pretty creative as sales individuals, because myself included, I sell from my business. So I'm always looking for creative ways to differentiate myself, but I'm also looking for all the ways that if I'm going to get creative, that I can sustain it. And so we'll talk about those technologies that are available to streamline your process. And also, I do want to kind of review some of the different technologies that are in the marketplace so that we can talk about you know, what might be right for you to choose for your organization. And I'm going to give you some guidance on that today. So hopefully you'll get some really nice takeaways. So here's an example of, um, I don't know if you've done this in your organization, when I spoke with Dan preparing for the webinar, we talked about the fact that, you know, here's an example of what a sales process often looks like. And if we move down to like the other slide, there's another example of what a sales process looks like. And whether you're using kind of the, the uh, pyramid or the circles, you know, there are sections to each part of your sales process. And here's a, an example of another one that I really like because this lines up your process with your customer's buying process. So I think it's really important that we start with this because each one of these processes, and if you look at the slide in front of you, you can kind of see like the previous slide said something about attraction. This one says, you know, identify. But each one of those processes will have breakdowns of details. And we're going to actually get into a little of that today. So let's start with what I think are some important questions. And they might seem like, you know, I've heard these questions before, but from an educational standpoint, we always have to go back and ask them again. So what does your process look like? And my next follow-up question is, is your process clear to everyone in your organization or in your department? It's very important that we talk about that because if the process is clear to you but not everyone else, what we're about to talk about, which is technology, it's going to be a lot more difficult for you to keep things moving. So before we move forward, there are a few things that I would love for you to keep in mind. So one, are you clear about your process? And then two, are all who are involved commit, um, committed to using and technology. So technology for me only works if you're very clear about your process and all those involved are committed. And before we move on to the next slide, I just want to stop and talk anecdotally for a second here. Um, I used to coach CEOs one-on-one um, -on -one, and one of the things that we used to do is go through learning how to use spreadsheets and a lot of them would want to write a formula from scratch in Excel and I would say to them, I can teach you how to write a formula, but you have to tell me what goes into your formula. So that's really what we're talking about here is all the tools that we can talk about around technology can work for you, but you really have to be super, super clear about the process. And the next thing that's really important is you have to make sure all the individuals involved are going to be committed to using whatever tools you decide to 
to commit to for your process. So, I love marketers. I actually am a marketer. And they came up with this great little thing called the easy button. <laughs> and I kind of use this as an example because oftentimes we look at technology and you know, especially nowadays with tablets and everything, everything looks so easy. But really, it's the setup and all the things behind it. So let's start with what is step one? Because I understand, I am kind of a technical person, but for a lot of people, this isn't easy. So the first thing I want you to do is envisioning that sales process that we just talked about. I want you to write out each step in the divisions of your process. So for example, I gave you an example here, which is your attraction step. You know, um, you go to a networking event. You, um, you know, um, write on the back of business cards when you're at the networking event. You um, add those cards to some type of a system, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. And then you follow up in your way, whether it be an email or a phone call, and we'll talk a little bit about that. So I'm going to kind of get into this a little bit more in detail, but this is what I mean when I say write out the process. And each of you, your attraction step is going to be different. I have a couple of different examples of an attraction step. But before we move forward, we have to talk about what steps are in the process. So think about your process. What are the details of that portion of the sales cycle? In each step of your sales process, you need to look for repetition. And so this is an opportunity for you to find the science side that Dan kind of alluded to, is if you can really identify, God, what am I doing all the time in this process? And, and there is a lot of repetition in what we do when we're selling. So those are the ways that you can kind of get started. Um, we have some more questions. Do you find yourself using the same paragraphs over and over to explain something? In a sales perspective, oftentimes you might tweak it a little bit. Maybe that's the art side for you. Maybe you're adding a little different language, talking to one person over another, or a different person in a different country. You might say something a little differently. But are you predominantly using the same thing over and over? Do you find yourself copying and pasting information from one email or document to another? Again, if you're doing this, there is an opportunity for automating a lot of those processes. And then one of the things that I find that people have complimented me on when I started in business was that they would say to me, I had such an amazing memory. And I used to kind of laugh and think to myself, you know, my database has helped so much with that. And nowadays, technology not only can remember things for you, but it can remind you. So here's a question. Is there a portion of your sales process that you forget, you miss a step because you might get too busy? And that's an important question because it's going to help you identify if you need some tools that automate you or prompt you, like even today's um, technology for this, go to webinar. Um, Arlene doesn't have to log in and send everybody a reminder email. GoToWebinar does it for her. So that's the kind of things that if you know that's an issue for you, you're going to want to look for technologies that offer that prodding or it, you'll hear it ter referred to as triggering elements. Okay, I know I have more questions. Um, do you find information you need stored in too many places? Um, this is a, a huge issue that I run into with people, um, especially when we're trying to streamline and pick the right technologies. Or when you're at home and not in the office, do you have access to everything you need? Because let's face it, if you do what I do and we're always selling, we're always working on things. So that's important. Is there a step in the sales process? process that is absolutely pivotal excuse me, <laughs> to your closing. Um, again, there are going to be tools that allow you to focus and you know, make notifications on, hey, alert, this is a pivotal process now. You need to spend a little bit more time with that particular client so that you can close them. So these are some things to actually think about before you start examining technologies. I find that people make the biggest mistake 
which is they go to the grocery store hungry. If you've ever been to a grocery store hungry, you'll know that you overbuy. Well, these questions and some of the things that we're going to talk about today will help you make some decisions on which tools are right for you because right now we're taking it away and just asking all the needs questions. So let's talk a little bit about one of our examples that I just went over with you a few minutes ago, which is that attraction step. And you can see here again, just to remind you, we go to a networking event, we write on the business card, you know, we say, okay, we know that after we get back from the networking event, we have to add those cards to maybe like our contact system, and we need to do some type of follow-up. Now, this process right here is we don't do the third and fourth steps, then why did we go to the networking event, right? So let's talk about how we do that. If we know that that's our process, you have to do things before you start. So before you actually start, one of the things that I recommend, and this is actually something that I do, is I created a standard follow-up email that I use to send after every networking event or possibly even an initial call or meeting. It might mean that you have to create two or three templates, but they might look something like this next slide. So um, you create the template, it would have like email subject and set it up in a way where you have little fields that you just have to input. So, you know, if it's a follow-up after an event, you might say met at and in parentheses event. And then I know it's strange, but even on a date is helpful because it reminds the person when they met you because um, maybe they don't remember or they're not as good at follow-up as you are. Um, let them know it was nice to meet them, you know, and then this is an opportunity to kind of get that dialogue going. But setting up this template ahead of time, and if you're a, a, a bigger business, we're going to talk about the systems to do that in, but even if you're smaller businesses or, you know, just getting started in this, you know, you can even just save this in your drafts folder in Outlook as a way of saying, okay, you know what, I'm not ready to move into a full system yet, but this is going to save you a lot of time and energy. If you're like me, um, when I first started, I actually wasn't a really fast typist, um, and I didn't have an assistant. I've gotten much quicker, <laughs> but um, I used to use a card scanner, and it really makes a huge difference. So right away when you get back from that networking event, you know, put your cards through the card scanner, and um, one of the things that you can do to combine this is if you are going to take these cards now and put them into, hopefully, because that was our other point, right into some type of a contact system. So for example, um, one of the contact systems that a lot of people use is Outlook, but you might use something a little bit more advanced like a CRM system. Um, and when you put those contacts in there, if you're using a CRM, which stands for a Customer Relationship Management System, and I'm sure some of you already have these, but um, if you're not using a CRM and you put it into something like Outlook, because Outlook is not really a true CRM, um, you'll look at this and see basically a CRM is a central place that your data is stored and oftentimes can be shared with other salespeople. Um, and it will do more than just store contact information. It will actually really help you with managing your process. So there is the ability at that point to merge that information and then send out the follow-up. So instead of sending out one email and then another email and then another email, you can do a merge to that template that we created before we actually went to the event. So that is kind of a typical like networking attraction example. Let's look at another attraction example. Um, let's say your business is doing something where, well, you know what, we generate more of our first initial attraction through our website. So if that's the case, then how is it coming in through your website? Well, odds are, if it's not a phone call, it's probably some type of online form. So here we go again, breaking down that maybe for you, your attractions are from different places. So you may have to break out your attraction step into um, networking attraction step, website attraction step, and even something like social media attraction step. 
So the process for maybe the website one might be, okay, the website is going to generate a first contact by sending an auto email from the website. It will send some type of notification to the salesperson for follow-up. And then there needs to be that person who reached out to your organization, a way to get them added to that, you know, maybe CRM system that we just talked about a few minutes ago. And then more specifically, um, follow-up generated based on, let's say, a form, um, for, sorry, based on um, form choices on your website, meaning that if they hit a drop-down and they chose one type of outsourcing service or like HR, you might send them one type of email. So that's where I'm saying there's an element of automation for you. So if we look at this example, um, this is one of our clients' websites actually. Um, it's a, a beauty company, and um, when they get um, an inquiry into their website, it goes directly into one of their CRM systems, and then their CRM actually sends the email so that it came through the website, it went into the CRM, and the CRM has that quote-unquote trigger to send it out, and now that contact's created, and we know there's a first contact that's already reached that individual, and they can kind of follow up from there and initiate the rest of their process. So as you can kind of see from these two examples, there are definitely ways to automate life, but you really do need to take the time to break everything down. So how do you get started? Because every time you go to a webinar, we all talk about how great these ideas are, but then you know, we weave and you say, hmm, all right, I'm not sure what's kind of step one. So, step one, outline your sales cycle. And like I said, if you look at this chart that I used here as an example is, think about how prospects get into your pipeline. So, it might be multiple different ways. Once they hit into different phases, are you going to have breakouts? And in each of those breakouts, is there something that you can use for streamlining? Step two, take um, an inventory of the technologies you rely on now. I know this is strange, but a lot of people don't realize what they're auto already relying on. And this is so important because you're going to need to know what you're relying on from a sales perspective to know what solutions you might want to consider. So for example, you know, it's not just a smartphone, but it's the type of phone. I'll give you a perfect example. Um, I have on here um, BlackBerry, and BlackBerry obviously integrates really well with some applications, but what if you have a Droid? A Droid does not always integrate really well with everything, or um, possibly an iPhone. Again, more and more of them are coming out, but you do need to know what you have and what you're comfortable using and you want to continue using before you make too many decisions. Software is another thing. Um, versions of software. Um, you guys can't see my computer today, but I run a Mac. So for me, um, we're constantly looking for, and we do run a lot of more web-based tools. So I can run them off my Mac. There's not a lot of things run on Mac. I know that sounds strange. Um, web Website. Your website is an attraction step, it's a, um, it is sales process step. Um, social media, if you are someone who uses LinkedIn a lot for business and you're getting a lot of leads through there, then that is a technology you rely on. And I'm gonna show you guys a little tip with that as well. And then of course, you know, your computer itself. So um, the other thing about that is when you're doing this inventory, be sure to consider what you use when you're at home. So um, I do find a lot of times that people use some things in the office and then they get home and they realize, uh-oh, I picked this, this tool, but then I got home and I'm on Windows 7 and the office is on Windows XP. Or I get home and I really, really want to work on my iPad on, on the train. I'm just more comfortable on it. So those are things that really need to go into your decision-making process. Step three. Review your sales cycle for each section that can be automated. That goes back to all those questions that I mentioned a little while ago. So as you break down your process, look for areas of repetition. 
review the different technologies that affect those cycles, and then which technologies are you already using, and that could actually make your life a little easier for automation. Um, I have some more questions. Look for places you execute the same steps to multiple contacts. I know that the art side of you wants to say, well, I need to make sure I say X or Y. Believe it or not, with the right CRM, you might have a field where you could insert an element so that it feels personable with every email that you send, but yet from your everyday, you might be talking to 20 people with that merge. So think about that. When reviewing your process, be sure to note places to automate items like a reminder call, a follow-up email, a trigger of something where if someone says yes, you know you move on to this step. If they say no, you move on to this step. Okay, step four, make some lists. Um, picking out technology is not always an easy thing to do if you haven't done this before. So. I mentioned the grocery store analogy, and it's really important here. Make a needs list. Um, I need to have access on multiple platforms. I need everything to be synchronized with these devices. I need to be able to see where people are in the process and how many are there. I need to know how many of my salespeople are um, and where they are in the process. I mean, it really does depend on each individual person on this call would have a totally different needs list. I then recommend that you make a concerns list because technology isn't always easy and that might be a part of the concern um, is that you know your team, you know yourself, are you someone that's going to adapt to something easily? So if not, you know, you might want to think about the fact that you need to make sure whatever you choose, it can't be too difficult. Or you might want to say, you know, um, my office and my team are resistant to change. That's a big part of why people keep using the same technology is because the office or the team doesn't want to change and you really need everyone's buy-in to make it work. Um, is each project too unique and too difficult to automate? I hear this a lot and you'd be surprised how often that is not as true as they think it is. But again, it should go on the concerns list because it's going to be something that people in the organization might struggle with. So before you move forward, one, review the process, current, um, the process, current technologies and lists. Two, take stock of who your stakeholders are and get them involved. Three, Decide if you need outside support. If you've gone through all of this information today and realized there's nobody in-house that has enough technical knowledge to make recommendations, you may need an outside consultant. Four, create a budget, timeline for implementation, and training. Um, I can't begin to tell you how many people forget that very last one, which is training. So. Let's talk about some technology tips to get you guys thinking and inspired. So my first tip, my big tip, <laughs> is you don't know what you don't know. <laughs> so sometimes one of the biggest things is to make some time for training. So that's first tip. Our next tip is did you know that Word actually offers a tool called Auto text in older versions or in the newer versions of 07 and 2010, it's called Quick Parts. Um, this is actually a very neat tool where it allows you to store um, large um, or long paragraphs, almost entire letters, or even short little snippets of things like taglines and things that you really want to make sure that you save properly. These can be added at the push of a button um, and they can be accessible through um, either one document or all the documents in your library. So if you look at the screen, there's like a little example of what the screen graph looks like out of either Office 2007 or 2010. And just for those of you who are curious to know where it might be, um, this is a fabulous little tool that you may want to think about using. Did you also know that um, Microsoft Office now offers a cloud version? So they have something called Microsoft Office 365. It's a tool that's designed to work locally or in the cloud. And it's great if you guys, if you work 
with multiple offices, if you're working with people uh, across the country, across the world, obviously with outsourcing that's something that happens. So if you want to work in real time on a document, this is an opportunity that you can do that um, with this particular application. Um, another thing that is important to think about when considering software is that many of the software applications that you probably already have already have a mobile version. So um, you can see here, there's an example of the fact that Microsoft Office um, does have a Droid version and an iPad version. As you can see, um, I use a lot of different technologies. Um, one of the next things that I love is that I'm a social media person. Um, I teach social media a lot. And this is one of the big things is that um, I find that people use their LinkedIn great. But then the contacts in their LinkedIn are not stored in their CRM system. And remember, to get value out of technology, you have to have all those contacts in a centralized place. Well, if you look at this screen, when you guys go to the My Connections tab within LinkedIn, at the bottom of the screen, the visual will kind of give you, yep, it says export connections. And we'll export an Excel spreadsheet and that you can use to import into um, Outlook. You can import it into your CRM tool. And there's actually also um, some other great tools within the LinkedIn environment. Like um, now they have notes that you can make on each contact. And they have, if you upgrade your account, they have a profile organizer. So there's some fabulous tools on LinkedIn. Um, though this isn't a LinkedIn session, one other thing to think about is if you use LinkedIn a lot, they now, you can save your searches. So you can always see like who the new contacts are. Um, the next thing is sales for me has always meant knowing what's going on in my prospects businesses. So keeping up with that is not always an easy thing. And you know what, I don't know about you, but I'm tired of being inundated with 100 emails. So one of the things that we do, especially because we do so much in online marketing and we manage so much that way, we actually need to keep up on all the trends for all our clients. Well, that would be ridiculous in an email. So Google Reader is a great way to do that. You can kind of see by this little screen that on the left side, you can actually look down there and break out by folder, you know, what you might be keeping track of. So you can name it by client, whatever works for you. And you can even subscribe to their blog feeds, especially if one of the things in your sales process might be to just touch a particular client. Well, what do you want to touch them with? Well, maybe you set it off with, you know, noticing a growth in their business and is it time for them to do some outsourcing? So little things that work specifically for you. Um, most people have a Google account. Um, you do need a Google account for that last item. So if you are using Google, then one of the things I also want you to think about is the idea of optimizing this account. Do you have other social connections and do you want to integrate them? And a lot of people have never even seen this screen on Google and it's a fabulous way for you to really go through and organize yourself. You do not have to use Google Plus, <laughs> but it does actually allow you to integrate tools that you might already be using into one location. And I think at the end of the day, that's one of the things that frustrates people about technology is you're too many places. So I spent a little time talking about CRMs, and um, obviously when we're talking about sales, CRMs is a huge part of being successful at sales. And one of the CRMs I have up here is called Infusionsoft. And why I like them is because um, they build their entire system on the fact of automating things and creating those triggers. Um, so this is a, an application that you might want to review. Um, another one um, is Salesforce. And I actually mentioned um, one of my international clients. That's what they use. Um, and again, same thing. Um, it's a fabulous system for keeping track of things. And this is, by the way, um, each of these tools will work for like the one to two person sales department all the way up to, you know, 30, 40, 50, 100 people um, in an organization. Um, another one that is, web, is uh, desktop based but actually has a cloud version as well is Apps. Um, 
One thing to note about their cloud version is it doesn't work with all browsers, um, or it, it didn't about a year ago. Um, I haven't tested the 2012 version yet, so that is something that if you're considering it is one thing that you may want to keep an eye on. Um, another desktop software that is um, fairly popular for CRM is something called Maximizer. So these are just a couple of the CRMs that are in the um, marketplace. And one of the things you might also want to look at is maybe CRMs that are specific to your industry. Um, we just helped a private equity firm decide um, what CRM was right for them. And there was actually, you'd be surprised how many CRMs are out there for hedge funds and private equity firms. So there is so much out there as far as, especially if you say, you know what, I have not used a CRM because a lot of them don't get my industry. I guarantee you that your industry has a CRM at this point. And I might get called on that, but I don't think I've run into an industry that doesn't have that or something else, like what is next. So one of the things that you'll find that is available are something called add-ons. So this is a way, once you've picked, let's say you've fallen in love with Salesforce, but, but it only can do 80% of the things that you want it to do. Well, before you make a true commitment, go look and see what kind of add-ons there are for that CRM application. So, for example, the screen that's a little small here, but it shows you the fact that this particular tool can integrate. So Salesforce integrates with, let's for, for mass emails, it integrates with vertical response, eye contact. You know, there's a whole bunch of third-party applications that will work with Salesforce. Another one is like every one of these CRMs at this point has third-party applications. So here's another one, Act. And again, the reason this was done is because maybe there wasn't something that those CRMs wanted to make that were industry specific enough. So third-party developers would do that. So those are some things that you can think about. Not only can you find add-ons for CRMs, but for things that you're using right now, like Office. There's a whole bunch of add-ons, especially for those of you, we talked about change. One of the things that um, you have to remember about technology is the companies will stop supporting previous versions. So if you've been forced to upgrade from, let's say, Office 2003, which you were really comfortable with, to Office 2010, you went from drop-downs to the ribbon. Well, now you can make your Office 2010 look just like 2003 with um, adding in what's called the classic menu. <laughs> so, you know, even um, Microsoft's tools have add-ons. So one of the things that you will have noticed that when I talked about some of these CRMs and a lot of the tools that I've talked about is I talked about a lot of things that are what we call cloud-based. So um, I always like to explain to people why I prefer the cloud. Um, unless you're using an application for like photo editing or something that is really um, heavy movement on your computer, um, there's most things that I prefer to work with in the cloud because it makes it accessible for multiple devices. It is constantly being upgraded and worked on by those companies. So it's not like I download a version and I have to run updates. I mean, it's being updated automatically. Um, it's a web-based system. And what's interesting about web-based systems, if you looked at like um, years ago, I used to teach things like Act and Goldmine. And my god, they're really tough for people to grasp. There's so much going on in them. And with the web-based systems, they really made the interfaces so much easier because they have to load quickly online. Um, the other thing that's great about these systems is, is a lot of times they're very scalable and there are tons of tons of things for helping um, as far as online um, community support but as you can see there's even add-ons for things so just certain things don't be afraid of the cloud um, so kind of our wrapping up phase so that you guys get to ask questions is I do want to talk about the fact that there can be too much tech um, I have found in the past that people fall in love or they pick something um, and you have to really make sure, at least when it comes to the business and the sales process, is that you really kind of review the technology and make sure every decision lines up. So for example, if 
the technology you're viewing, um, is it going to work with all the tools? Hence the idea that you might want to look at some of the add-ons. Um, or will it work with the technology you've already invested in? Um, are all avenues feeding into the same central source to keep a streamlined process? So, you know, if you have an app on your phone and you have something else here and something else there, that's why technology stresses us out. Um, so, remember, to use technology effectively, you need to spend some time evaluating your sales cycle, reviewing current technologies, identifying steps for automation, and breaking down your needs and your concerns. I believe that is all. Did I miss something? No, thank you, Jennifer. You did a, did a great job of, uh, of giving us kind of a, a broad view of a bunch of different techniques and uh, you know, issues we might be kind of confronted with. Um, at this time, anybody who has any questions for Jennifer, uh, please send them our way, and I'll do my best to uh, get as many to Jennifer as possible. Um, while, uh, while I'm waiting for some of those to come in, I have a couple questions I jotted down my, myself, Jennifer. And, and the first is a two-part question related to CRM. My, my sense is of the people on the webinar today, uh, they probably fall into maybe three categories. One is they have a CRM, and if they're using it, that, that, that's easy. Um, second is if, if they, maybe they have a CRM, but they don't use it. <laughs> um, and third is maybe uh, they don't have one. So, so if I'm the sales leader uh, of an organization and, and, I, and I, I, I buy into all the benefits of a CRM, um, how do I encourage my team to, to actually use it? Is it just training and, and process around it? Or how do I you know, ensure that I get the, the, the most bang for my buck and actually uh, implement it well? Um, that is an absolutely fabulous question. So if we take it from um, different perspectives, if you have a CRM, one of the things I think you should do before, if, and that's not being used, let's say you have a CRM but it's not being used, sit down with your team and talk about why they're not using it. What is it about that particular CRM that is causing issues? And here is where you have to start to listen to the fact, is it technology or is the process not clear? I can't begin to tell you how often that happens is that, well, it's not set up in a way that works with my workflow. Um, well, have them explain it. And then maybe um, at that point, that's a really good opportunity for you to say, okay, is the CRM actually living up to the needs of my team? And if it is, and everybody's clear about the process, but it's not being utilized, at that point, I think it's a great opportunity for you to find a trainer that can not, don't send them out for training, by the way. That's actually one of the worst things you can do, and I'm going to tell you why. Because when you send them out to training, what happens is they get a general training, and it's not applicable to their day-to-day. -day. What you need is someone who actually knows, who breaks down your process and shows your team how to use that CRM with their process. And if you don't find a consultant like that, that's where oftentimes it falls through the cracks. Um, the second side to that question, Dan, which is, well, you know, I don't have a CRM and maybe you haven't gotten one because you're worried about it being difficult or your team not using it. Um, one of the things I would recommend you do is actually, again, get the team together and talk about, you know, what their concerns are, what their needs are, and make them part of the decision-making process it's almost like help, letting them help, they get excited. And when they get excited, I have to tell you, the buy-in is much higher. And they will want to use it, because they'll be like, oh, I, I've been training people, guys, since um, 1997. I was actually, how I started my business is I was actually a software trainer. And um, in doing that, so many people and organizations would say to me, oh my god, I didn't know there was a faster way. And they would email me after and say, Thank you. You've made my life so much easier. I take just because I applied the software to their needs, and I didn't just say, "Here's how you use Word." You would. You really need to make sure whether it's a CRM, which was around the question, or any technology, that you're making sure that it's applicable to the person's needs. If they don't need to, if they don't do 
mass databases, then don't show them pivot tables in Excel. I mean, silly little things like that actually make people's eyes cross and throw up their hands and not want to learn. Show, ask them what they struggle with and then find the tools that make their lives easier. And, and then you'll get such a buy-in to it. Yeah, no, it's a good point. I, I appreciated your comments around, you know, CRM add-ins and, and custom industry CRMs. I think, I think that's the challenge with uh, many of my members is, you know, maybe too generic or uh, they have trouble kind of customizing it, you know, for themselves. So um, I think that makes sense. The, the, second, the second part of my question is for those that don't have, uh, have a CRM or don't have some kind of, you know, tool to nurture the opportunity. So, you know, we now have a, a lead nurturing offering here at OI, but uh, for those, let's say they don't have that, they don't have a CRM, or it's a salesperson who hasn't embraced their CRM, is there any um, advice or, or maybe basic applications that kind of integrate uh, maybe Google Docs and Outlook or, or, or some kind of combination of those things to kind of create your own basic automation? You know, um, it's a great question and it's a difficult question, um, Dan, because um, what you're doing then is, I know you're going to think this is strange, but you're getting into the... Um, the, the issue that you're going to end up having, again, too much tech. So if you have, you know, too many things going on in too many places, you will run into that frustration and then you begin to hate technology. So um, I would say that you should try to commit to a suite. So if you're not going to embrace a CRM, at least embrace a suite of tools. So for example, um, simplicity sake, I think most people are familiar with it, is Microsoft Office. Um, one, you need to make sure you're on the same version of Office with all your um, um, software because for them to talk to each other, that will work. Um, and maybe invest in maybe an add-in. So a lot of people don't realize that Outlook has the ability in its contacts to customize fields. You can um, run mass emails through um, an Outlook um, system through through using the Word interface. It's actually under your Outlook. It's actually under Tools, and you will see Mail Merge, and you can actually go down the list and select five people. Um, I would recommend like creating an add-on, or sorry, not creating, but purchasing an add-on that would allow you to monitor things. But database systems, guys, for me, and and why I'm so like enthralled with the CRM is because. It allows you to very quickly run reports. And if reports don't matter to you, then you might be able to get away with not using one. But the ability to be able to see you know, where people are in a process in a button push, or um, the ability to, um, if you're not someone who's good at you know, design, having a template that's already created, it, these are the things that make your life easier as opposed to harder. Um, so that's kind of why I would push a little bit to integrate you into and, you know, but I find the right one. And, and trust me, there's a C, I think we talked, I talked about some big ones. So I'll give you another one that's really, really easy to use. It's called Zoho, Z-O-H-O. They have a whole suite of solutions and one of them includes a content management system. So, and it's really for like the very small startups, but it's a great little you know, get you started. And by the way, that CRM also allows you to integrate with website forms. <laughs> well, that's a good segue, Jennifer. So I, I have a question here from a, an audience member about about the websites and perhaps the website form. What what, is, what do you recommend um, as, a, as a next step in the process for, you know, a lead that uh, comes through a website? So it's an interesting question whether, you know, whether you have your own website and you're following up on your own leads or, um, you know, maybe you're doing a marketing program and, and, and you get a lead report. What, what is your recommendation as a first kind of step in the process to follow up on those, uh, on those leads? Well, you know, um, first of all, um, most people like to get, at least when they fill out an online form, they do want to get some type of automatic email right away so they know that when they filled out the form that it was received. And I do think that if your website doesn't have that type of programming, that is something that you do want to make sure is added on. And the next thing that you want to do is, this is going to be unique for each of you. Um, you may want to set up a secondary follow-up email that goes out within two hours to make sure that the person 
get something more specific. Um, so at that point, if you're using a CRM system and the website lead fed directly into your CRM, you can actually have it, especially if it's cloud-based CRM, have it set up so that if the lead came in from this type of form. So this is where this process is going to be really important because if you have different forms on your website for different reasons or if they selected X in the form, then they should get this email follow-up. If they selected Y, they should get this email follow-up. Those types of things can make a huge difference because um, people will say, wow, I didn't expect to hear from you so soon. And that's where, this is where the art side of it has to come in. This is where you may want to take fields from within their own, within the form that they filled out and integrate it back into the message so it looks like it was more personalized than just a standard um, email that went out. So that is a great way to follow up. If um, obviously there is going to be the other side to it a little bit, where you know some people, depending upon their industry, may want to make phone calls. So you may want to get alerts sent to your phone so that you know that you've received an email from your website, an inquiry, and so you can decide right there and then if you want to actually make a phone call. Especially if you are in an industry where you don't get a hundred of these types of things a week, maybe it, it's faster for you to at least start with a phone call. Right, right. Okay, the next, the next question is about, uh, I think, vehicle. Uh, so, so what, what in, in your experience, um, what's, the, what's the best type of vehicle to, to generate um, leads? Is it, is, it a, is it a website or a landing page? Or, or what, what sort of mechanisms do you find uh, are the most effective for, for lead generation purposes? When we, like, can we clarify that a little bit when we say, um, the correct vehicle, are we speaking online? Um, I think the question is talking about in general. So what is, I guess, your recommendation in general? Those are going to be really, for me, industry specific. Um, you know, it really will depend on, and this is, by the way, why it's so important for me to understand your, like anyone's sales process, because within the sales process, you have to also understand your customer. So. The different vehicles may vary. Like um, I have had clients who who do much better with landing pages. Um, as a matter of fact, we just relaunched a website with um, someone who had been running an ad in the the New York Times, and when we switched their website and gave them a proper landing page, their lead generation went up forty percent. Um, so it was just you know, um, but that was something that worked for them because their advertising there drove them in this place. Um, if you're someone that uses social media like LinkedIn, that can be an absolutely wonderful tool for lead generation um, if you know how to use it. Um, I have taught LinkedIn sessions to clients and teams and they have generated you know lots of inquiries off of some um, just obviously being more involved in groups and knowing how to prospect properly through that lovely um, social database because that's really what it is. Um, right. So it really will depend for me, um, that advice could vary. Um, it, it would depend, I mean, I can even tell you that there's some amazing things that I've seen happen with clients from both B2B and B2C perspective on Twitter. Yep, yep. No, I agree with you. I think, um, you know, and we do a lot of, you know, advising and strategy for, for our clients, you know, obviously specific to the outsourcing space. And, you know, I think, I think you're right. I don't think there's one silver bullet. Um, you know, we, we typically advise, um, you know, our members to, you know, have an integrated approach. So, um, you know, the, the, the better campaigns that I've put together, um, you know, involve an element of both online and offline, multiple touch points over time. Um, and allow you to, to kind of create a relationship with your with your prospect, especially when you're talking you know complex outsourcing deals that aren't done in a few days or a few weeks. You're not talking B to C. You're talking B to B. So it's a more complicated sale. There's more people involved, and so I think you know the, the goal is to uh, get in front of them as often as possible, so that when they are ready to transact, they know who you are. Uh, and they're comfortable enough uh, with you to bring you know, bring you into the conversation. And Dan, if I can add a little something to that for everyone, um, like one of the things I didn't talk about today, um, but I can kind of give it as an added now is, 
you know, if your website is um, a really strong website and you use it a lot to generate interest and not in that the keyword there being interest, um, using a tool like a HubSpot may be a, a fantastic application for you um, because one of the things that technology does is it tracks the IP address of the person who filled out your online form and every time they come back to the website it sends a follow-up email to them and you don't have to do it. You have to set up plan meaning the trigger so you know they filled up this landing page so you knew what they were interested so if they came back during the sales process to reevaluate you you wouldn't have to even think about it. That application will send follow-up emails because it's based off IP addresses. It is really amazing. It's it's you know it's definitely worth the investment if that is a huge part of your business. Great, great. Uh, one more question here. I think we have time for one more. Um, is around uh, around Google Analytics. Is uh, what are your thoughts around Google Analytics and? Uh, is there a better tool, a tool that integrates better with some of the things you're talking about? What is your what is your uh, recommendation there? Um, Google Analytics is absolutely fabulous, um, but there are definitely some other tools out there. Um, you know, it depends on what else you're looking for from your analytics program. Um, you know, if you're looking for it to um, to run different scenarios, then Google Analytics isn't really going to be able to do that. Um, I can actually um, send to Arlene um, if you'd like for follow-up, and we could even put this up on the LinkedIn group after um, some other examples of some of the different analytics programs that you know can can give you a little bit more in reporting. Um, one of the things Google Analytics does not do is it does not provide you with IP address. Um, tracking of the visitors to your site, and so again, if you're in an audit, if you're in an area where you know by looking at IP addresses that this is this particular client, then you know you'll know throughout the sales process if they're actually going back and doing their due diligence and reading things on your website, etc. And that's one thing that analytics, at least for Google, does not provide you, and that's oftentimes why there are other um, applications. Um, I apologize, my um, tongue is a little tied, so I can't remember each of them at this moment, but I will send them so we can put them out there for uh, follow-up after. Yeah, great, and, and so for, for everyone on today's webinar, the conversation uh, continues on LinkedIn. I don't want to uh, limit the questions. Jennifer's been good enough to uh, offer to uh, run a, a LinkedIn group on the Outsourcing Institute's LinkedIn Providers and Influencers Forum. Uh, in the next few days, so uh, bring your questions there. Let's keep the conversation going. Um, if you'd like to speak to Jennifer directly about uh, some technology therapy uh, and help making your website and your web marketing more sales-oriented, uh, contact Jennifer. Her information is there. Uh, if you're looking for uh, marketplace exposure and awareness or lead generation programs, uh, please contact me directly about the Outsourcing Institute's performance-based sales and marketing initiatives. Uh, lastly, uh, keep an eye out for the next uh, few installments of our Sell More Outsourcing series. Um, October 13th, we have Don't Make These Sales Planning Mistakes, as many of you start planning for 2012. Uh, we will also have a webcast in October um, about skill sets and attributes that your next outsourcing sales hire must possess. Um, and in November 8th, we have creating and qualifying sales-ready leads, which I think, based on some of the questions here, uh, may be a, a very interesting topic for many of you. So again, Jennifer, thank you for uh, your time today, and I uh, look forward to continuing the conversation uh, on LinkedIn. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you. Have a great day.